I tell you, I looked out my backyard the next day at this thing and I was like, what did you do? <laughs> I mean, it's, this is horrible. I brought home basically a piece of trash. So let's let's find out if there's any life left in her though. Water pump's not locked up. Uh. That's not good. This engine's full of water. Look at this, the fuel fill hose actually dry rotted through. Man, that would be terrible if somebody started filling this boat and went to take it out. Ah, oh, yeah, it's just straight water coming out of it. I got sick of hand pumping it, so I broke out my little pneumatic um, vacuum brake bleeder. All right, we got most of the water all the water out now i'll leave that milk on the bottom so that way there's some lubricating uh abilities lubricating fluid down there can you see that first cylinder full to the top with water <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to go back and do squirrel things get out of here he's creeping you creeping <laughs> oh it rotates a little bit and then stops oh there it goes all right, got it rotating. Things are looking good. Oh, let's get some lube in there. And everything I was pulling out of the dipstick is just milky oil now, so that's got plenty of lubricating properties like I was saying before. Let's get some juice hooked up to it. Oh, I hear, let's hit the bilge pump going. Oh, big draw on that starter. Nothing. That starter's locked up too. Right. Yeah, this thing's shot. Mm. Get all that water. Oh, yeah, it's kind of better off getting a new one. A little seized up. The springs on the brushes are broken, so as you can see, this needs just a full rebuild. Let's see if these tires still got any life left in them. The valve's done. Clean them up. Reseat the bead. I've got the ground hooked up on the jump pack. We'll hook the positive up and then, oh yeah, sounds good. Got that starter in, let's hear this first crank. Does not sound good, but let's throw the plugs in. No spark. I just needed to run a little sandpaper across those points. Oh. She is. I'm now gonna suck the rest of that milky oil out and fill her up with some freshy. It's got a Rochester carb on it. Ooh, oh yeah, a ton of water. You can see all the water on the bottom of the bowl there. Here's what the gas look like coming out of the tank. So let's hook it up to auxiliary. And it doesn't seem the idle circuit wants to come back to life on this 
carb, so we'll go check that out inside. Yeah, a little sludgy in there. I'll get that cleaned up and throw it back on. Main problem I found was the idle jets clogged solid and then this uh, fuel screen was pretty sludged up too. Yeah, so the impeller is good on the water pump, but the screen got hot at some point and spun. I got that recentered where it needs to be. Like new. I'm gonna rub some Vaseline on this too. So she got lube until water makes it in. And now I have to verify that there's water flow through these ports, no blockages. So this one, you see it's coming out on the inlet. So the other side is not. And uh, yeah, look at this, the hose actually popped off. Um, this is what goes to the engine cooling system. So now I'm gonna shoot in this one to make sure that's not blocked. I hear water leaking inside, which is not good. And it's pouring out of the back of the engine, so it looks like we have maybe a freeze plug popped out. It all makes sense now, too. Remember that rattle noise we heard when we were starting the engine? That's the freeze plug was probably dangling around in the back, getting uh, caught up on the flywheel. That should be everything to pull the motor. Hi. Hey, Beth. Bad time? <laughs> All right, that only took like 10 minutes. Now we can pop the housing off the flywheel and I'll, sh I'll show you that plug. There is the freeze plug that's missing. So we could, I thought about chipping a hole in the housing and just uh, putting one in there, but clearly you wouldn't be able to get it to it anyway. It's a brass plug. So you see the block did freeze and this got pushed out and it's all chewed up from the teeth of the flywheel hitting it. I could probably reuse this really. Got that plug cleaned up. Smear that around. Oh yeah, it's starter. What are you doing, huh? I almost ran over you, buddy. Come on. <laughs> that a little bouncy? Oh. oh, darn, we got another cooling system leak. Uh, I can't really see, but uh, could be a crack in the block or just the exhaust manifold. We're gonna just let that roll.
let's uh, see if she's taking on any water and then we'll get moving. She got quite a few good looks going down the road too. Must have been that beautiful tree. Not taking on any water and we got our USGS approved fuel tank that's secured with a vented cap. Yep, there it is, big old crack along the block. That's no big deal though. This is uh, not a pressurized cooling system. <laughs> Looks great. That's nice. Look at that. Found a key that looks like it could work. Oh yeah. trash out of there and I think she's looking pretty good that rain cleared out and look at that rainbow she's a lightweight race craft now I did end up trying to knock one of these the seats out and man it's just full of foam under it and the foam was very you know waterlogged too in the back it is as well let me show you how this is yeah tuck her under and I mean it's it's hard getting these all apart, but this is very weak now. I mean, that's the bottom of the hull. If you hit that with the shovel, you can see it flexing pretty good. But I mean, this is a big, heavy piece of foam. Like this is, this is completely waterlogged. We're going full race boat status with structural integrity, just not even a thought. This thing's gonna be wicked fast. I did take the old carpet and stuff that all under the tree. So we have a good, because I don't want this thing dying on me. Strong stuff.
And there we are. The only foam left is those two blocks and these two waterlogged blocks back here. I just want to kind of leave them in case that helps stiffen up the stern. You can see this boat is very floppy now. I mean, it's just flexing on those bunks. Not gonna waste a ton of time, but by golly, she is cleaning up nice. Look at that. about this tree is it's a nice wind indicator and so if it's at a 45 degree slope or more that means usually about 20 mile an hour winds you know it's not quite at the 45 so we should be all right we'll just do a quick first run of the season maybe do a max speed test uh jen and gus came down to spectate in case i break down she might have to Pick me up down river because the wind is blowing down here a decent amount too it's just real off and on but we're we're right at high tides that's perfect man this thing is so lightweight i'm actually gonna have to readjust the trailer too because it has just no tongue weight now thanks baby see you soon hopefully Wind indicator staying above 45. Oh, all right, all right, going a little bit. The steering is so tight in this thing. This is for those guys that say you can't take a boat out that has structural damage. Would I take this in the ocean right now? No, definitely not. You gotta think when it's on a trailer, all that weight is point loaded on the bunks. And right now it's evenly distributed with the water. It starts getting choppy or waves, then that's gonna be a problem. Just taking it easy for now. Let this thing break in. You can really feel the water under the boat when you press on it. A lot of flex. I don't know if you guys can see that. He's a jiggler. <laughs> Ran good. for one more ride today solo do a top speed run a little bit more thorough of a test i love it bone dry in here tell me the last time you saw your boat bone dry like that okay the only bad thing about a lightweight boat is as soon as you go on one side the whole boat's leaning like 30 degrees <laughs> all together look how much that stringer flexes there's a lot of floaters out here like that and if you hit that with a compromised hull well it's, it's just not going to be good by the way the temp gauge is working Green 175 is going to hold steady the river has smoothed out around the bend we're doing 22 trimmed up right now we're going to do a little top speed run Jen, she's hanging out with a friend. 
They can make fun of my ratchet traps, but at least they can't make fun of my cleat hitch. Well, 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 what is this? I find you at a fancy dinner all alone. Who's your hot date? Paying the big bills. My best friend, she takes me out on nice dates when you're not available. Feel how much she rocks? Are you gonna sit normal? Yeah. Not gonna lie, I'm thoroughly impressed that this boat hasn't taken one drip of water on. I mean, check that out. Not one drip. Every other boat I have always takes a drip on, and we only drank one gallon of gasoline going, geez, that was probably a 15 mile round trip. Trash liner, big thumbs up of approval. What do you think, Jen? Had fun. We had a good time. <laughs> Tree is looking sad ever since the first couple of rides. Probably flooded out right now too. Yeah, probably you never leave a boat tilted like this because it'll fill up with so much water. There's some plastic up here. I think we'll find a good spot to get some. The tide's coming in too, so we can just beach her, beach her hard here. Just like this. Oh yeah, beautiful. The last time I was on this beach, it was in the winter and we had a bonfire on the water, but I noticed a ton of plastic just kicking around. And all of this stuff, as you know, will end up out in Delaware Bay, which is, oh, I don't know, a couple hours south of here, in like three hours on the water, and then out to the ocean, turns into microplastics eventually. So, you know, we'll just aim for, for plastic only. I mean, glass would be nice too, but that actually will just cut your feet open. That doesn't get into our food supply like the foam and plastic does. So that, I'm gonna shoot for just plastic today. We'll see how long it takes me to, to fill this barrel up. We got a little friend here. What is it? Oh, something moving. Oh, there he is. Little frog, dirty Delaware frog. Look at him go. Look at him go. Making a run for it and he's off. And there we are. Only took about 15 minutes to fill this barrel up. Of course, if you melted this all down, it's probably not very much plastic. Was able to clean this area a little bit, and I know this is not even a dent in the real problem, but I at least, uh, you know, the trash liner has lived up to its name. If we get this back safe, as long as it doesn't blow off for the boat's sakes, and then it floats away. Let's not even talk about that. Now we're looking classy. Woo! Now I'm also thinking this could be maybe a get out of jail free card if we get pulled over, because we're heading down to a busier area where, you know, you might get a couple looks from, from law enforcement, but. I think this 95 degree wind might be drying the leaves out a little bit. Yes, another perk of having a junkie boat is you can pick any parking spot. This is actually all exposed and swampy at low tide, but since the tide's coming up, we just did two cleat hitches wrapped around this route. We're good to go. The main dock's a little full and the trash liner's not going in and out of gear too reliably. They've got their own tugboats on there. I don't think I've ever seen that. Halt test. <laughs> there it is. If it can take a tugboat wave, it's good to go. 